This was our land. We were here first. Then the Nords came and put chains on us, forbid us from worshipping our gods. Some of us refused to bow. We knew the old ways would lead us back to having a kingdom of our own. That is who we are. The Forsworn. Criminals in our own lands, and we will cut a bloody hole into the Reach until we are free. Walking through the gates of each of Skyrim's major cities is its own unique experience. In Solitude, justice is served to a man speaking treason. In Windhelm, there are talks of discrimination in the poverty-stricken district. And in Riften, scrummy crooks crawl out of the woodwork almost instantly. But in the city of Markarth, something much more sinister is at play. As you enter the main market square beyond the gates, you don't have a moment to take in the beauty of the Dwemer architecture, as an innocent shopper is attacked violently for no reason whatsoever. Well, no apparent reason, that is. Upon killing his target, the murderer will bellow, the Reach belongs to the Forsworn, before attempting to escape. We've heard of the Forsworn before, those savages living like beasts in tribes across the Reach, but what on earth does that have to do with Markarth and this poor woman named Margaret? I guess it's time to look a little bit deeper. What's up guys, it's Scott here and welcome to Fudge Mopper. Today we're going to delve into the series of events that reeks of connivance, and by researching the history of the Forsworn and following the leads, we can just see how deep this seemingly standard crime goes. Now, we know that the area bordering Skyrim, High Rock, and a small portion of Hammerfell has long been warred over between the inhabitants of the three provinces for a number of reasons, but when we look a little deeper we can see that the Forsworn and the Reachmen as a whole have based their entire identity around the place. Names like Red Eagle come to mind. He fought to unify the Reachmen kingdom, and when it seemed the impossible had been achieved, the Elysian Empire of Cyrodiil ripped the Reach from their grasp once again. Ever since, the Reachmen have been desperately trying to regain their their homeland. When the Dwemer disappeared from Skyrim in the 700th year of the First Era, the Reachmen occupied Markarth, and the city has always played a significant part in their history. But more recent wounds come to mind when we think of Markarth and the Forsworn. The Markarth incident of 174 in the Fourth Era saw the Reachmen take advantage of the unrest caused by the Great War. A group of Reachmen rebelled from the Nords and captured the city while the defenders were away fighting the Empire's war. In order to reclaim the city from the Reachmen, the Nords enlisted the help of the legendary Ulfric Stormcloak and his militia. Success would supposedly guarantee free Talos worship for the Nords. The militia were successful in retaking Markarth, and the Forsworn survivors fled to the wilds of the Reach behind their leader named Madanark. Now, the context of the killer's murderous cry seemed clear The Reach belongs to the Forsworn. Was this a lone wolf willing to become a martyr for a cause far beyond his abilities to affect? Or was it perhaps one event in a serious conspiracy? The only way to be sure is to investigate. Now if the Dragonborn is alert enough, he can intervene and prevent the murder, but either way, Waylon will be killed, and whatever is going on here will not be affected by the success or failure of this murder. After the situation is dealt with, the Dragonborn will be approached by a bystander who saw the whole thing. He will hand us a letter asking us to meet him by the Shrine of Talos. Whatever it is he wants to tell us, he isn't willing to say in public. At the Shrine, Eltris will reveal some information. His father had been killed by the Forsworn in a similar fashion, and Eltris has been desperate to find out why it happened. He will elaborate, saying, Yes, it all started when I was a boy. My father owned one of the mines, rare for anyone who was in the Nord. He was killed. Guards said it was just a madman, but everyone knew the murderer was a member of the Forsworn. I've been trying to find out why ever since. I've gotten nowhere so far, and then I got married. I have a child of my own on the way. I swore I was going to just give up for my child's sake, but it's like my father's ghost is haunting me, asking me why. He wants us to investigate Margaret's background at the inn and in Wayland's room in the Warrens. Maybe that way we can discover a motive. The next step is to access Margaret's room. Now, if she died in the attack, we could take the room key from her body. A little disrespectful, I know, but I'm sure she'd understand that we're trying to get to the bottom of this. Without the key, the room can be rented from Klepper. Inside her room, we can find her journal, which says, General Tullius is growing impatient, but I'll bring back the deed to Sidna Mine. On my life, I won't allow a group of Stormcloak sympathizers to own the prison to the most notorious criminals of the Reach. They say no one escapes. Why? Is it really that secure? Maybe. 
I've played my hand too soon by rushing the confrontation with Thonar. There are shadows around every corner in the city and I know I'm being watched. If she survives, you can approach her directly and she'll tell you essentially the same thing. Margaret is an Imperial investigator and her work against the Silverblood family must have had something to do with the ploy. Our next stop is the Warrens and the murderer's rented room. In here we can find Waylon's note. The note shows that Waylon was following orders and the letter was signed by N. What could that stand for? On our way out of the Warrens, it becomes abundantly clear that somebody is interested in what we're up to in the city. A merc named Dryston will say that we've gone too far into somebody's business and we're going to have to get our knuckles bloody. Defeating him will reveal the identity of our mysterious N. Nepos the Nose, so we'll definitely have to go sniff him out very soon. We now have ourselves two leads. There's the Silverblood family, specifically Thonar and his connection to Sidna Mine, and then there's Nepos the Nose. We can find Thonar at the Treasury House. Speaking with Rahada, the receptionist will be of little help as she simply says Thonar does not wish to be disturbed. We can call upon our silver tongue to persuade, intimidate, or bribe her, or we can simply pick the lock to his room. His room is to the left and then straight ahead. Thonar will reassure us that he does not want to be disturbed, but before the conversation can end, a commotion starts up outside. The Forsworn have attacked, and Thonar's wife has been murdered. This will provoke Thonar to reveal the truth about Madanark. That name rings a bell. It turns out that Thonar Silverblood has been able to control the unstable Forsworn by holding their leader Madanark captive in Sidna Mine, but apparently the incarcerated mastermind has been getting out of control. If you happen to have the dexterity, you can pickpocket Thonar's journal, and this gives you even more vital information. Madanark is becoming unruly. You'd think that 20 years in prison would calm a beast like him down a bit. Maybe I should have let the Jarl execute him after the uprising after all. Still, he's been invaluable in getting rid of several problems over the years. Maybe I'm overreacting. No one knows about our little arrangement, not even the Forsworn. I wonder how they would react knowing their king in rags was one of my most important assets. This little shadow rebellion of his better not start to include me though. If I find out he's even thinking about double crossing me, I'll make sure he dies inside Sidna Mind like the animal he is. So where does Nepos fit into all of this? In his house, Nepos will invite you in for a chat. He will personally admit to being a member of the Forsworn and he is very loyal to the King of Rags, Madanak. Nepos reveals to us a lot of information and even talks about sending countless young men to their deaths in the name of the Forsworn. For 20 years, he's been following Madanak's orders who writes to him from behind bars. He will even tell us a little about their motives. Markarth and the Reach are our lands. That is why we are the Forsworn. We cannot claim the home that is rightly ours. But then, during their war with the Elves, we had our moment. We drove the Nords out of the Reach in a great uprising. Then Ulfric and his men came. Those of us who didn't run were executed, except for myself, my king, and a handful of others. Madanark chooses the targets, enemies of the Forsworn cause within the city, and his subjects carry out the deeds. Wayland's orders to kill Margaret came from Nepos, and Nepos' orders came from the mastermind, Madanark. But despite his remorseful tone, he's confiding in his investigator a little too much for my liking. Then it all becomes clear. Nepos has no intention of allowing us to leave his home with this condemning knowledge, so we must fight our way out. Escaping Nepos' house intact seems like the final hurdle. We have the information, we know who requires punishment, all we need to do now is to tell Eltris, and then we can tell the guards, and they can arrest the surviving conspirators. But when we return to the Shrine of Talos, we see that there are a group of guards looming over Eltris' lifeless body waiting to put us in prison. Now you can fight your way to freedom here if you wish, but without submitting and going to jail, the conspiracy cannot be stopped. You will be a fugitive in Markarth indefinitely. As we make our way to Sidna Mine, we can spend a moment mulling over our findings. It's pretty clear what motivates Madanark and what motivated Nepos and the other Forsworn lackeys. They are all Reachmen and they won't stop until they own the Reach. But what about Thonar Silverblood? His involvement seems much more sleazy. He's profiting from this arrangement that sees countless people killed. What could be his motivation? I guess we'll find out when we get to Sidna Mine. Once in the mine, we can learn from Urusen that Madanark has his own private cell guarded by Borkul the Beast. In order to pass him, we must present him a shiv or persuade him. Once past him, we can talk to the man himself, the Mastermind. We can ask him about Thonar Silverblood, and he will reveal the truth. I had Markarth. My men and I drove the Nords out. We had won. So we thought. Retribution was swift. 
was captured, quickly tried, and sentenced to death. But my execution never came. Thonar's Silverblood stopped it. He wanted the Forsworn at his call, that I would point their rage at his enemies and spare his allies. Of course, Thonar would accept Madanark's butchery so long as this killer was on his side. No one could challenge the Silverbloods if he had his own secret militia working for him, and with the Forsworn's support, Thonar would allow Madanark's scheming to go unchecked. Only now it seems to have gone too far. Now we have two options. We can side with Thonar Silverblood by killing Madanark here and now. Once killed, all we would need to do is take the note from his corpse which details a secret escape route out of the mine. Thonar will be generous, gifting us his enchanted family ring. But at this point, it just feels wrong to let Thonar off the hook, serving him like a mindless lackey only to allow his corruption to continue unchecked. It seems like a situation where we must pick between two evils. Alternatively, we can hear Madanark out and see what he has to offer. Madanark will try to make us sympathetic to his cause. He will allude to the injustices present in Markarth and will tell us to speak with Bragg, the man who has spent the most time in this prison besides Madanark himself. Bragg's story goes like this. I had a daughter once. She'd be 23 this year. Married to some hot-headed silver worker or maybe on her own learning the herb trade. The Nords didn't care who was and who wasn't involved in the Forsworn Uprising. I had spoken to Modernak once. That was enough. But my little Aethra didn't want to see her papa leave her. She pleaded to the Jarl to take her instead. And after they made me watch as her head rolled off the block, they threw me in here anyway to dig up their silver. Maybe they're purposely pulling on our heartstrings in an attempt to manipulate us into helping them escape, but it's hard to argue with them. Thonar owns this prison, and the more men who are sent here to dig up silver ore, the better off he is. The Silverbloods profit from an abundance of incarcerations. As we said at the beginning of the story, the Reachmen have been here for a long time, and while they may be barbarians at most, they have constantly been tormented, killed, and used by Nords, Bretons, and Imperials who want the strategic land or the silver beneath the soil. I won't tell you which side to take, but there's no doubt that siding with the King of Rags in this quest makes for an exciting climax. If we offer Matt our support, he will demand a display of loyalty. We must assassinate Grisvar the Unlucky, who has outlived his usefulness to the Forsworn Rebellion. We don't know much about this poor sword, but his nickname seems rather accurate. Once dealt with, Madanark will regain the remaining prisoners to escape through the Markarth ruins. After fighting your way through the creatures and automatons that lie within, Madanark and Thonar will come face to face. The Forsworn will charge the city, killing Thonar and every non-Forsworn member in sight. Now you must fight your way out of the city until you reach the safety of Drudark Redoubt. And that concludes the Forsworn Conspiracy. Either Madanark escapes with his Forsworn prisoners, or Thonar continues his corrupt deeds without his former associate. Things in the city of Markarth may finally go back to normal, with guards free of corruption and markets that once again can go without the fear of death. But if you venture back to the Shrine of Talos, the remnants of the deadly conspiracy are clear as day. Here in this forgotten crag, by the statue of a forbidden god, lies the body of an innocent man who simply wanted to know why his father was killed. At the time, it didn't make a whole lot of sense. His father owned a mine, which was quite rare for someone who isn't a Nord, and then the Forsworn had killed him. It understandably didn't make any sense. The Reachmen were not known for caring a great deal about silver in the mines. They were more interested in simply liberating the Reach altogether. But upon reflection, it all adds up. The Forsworn were in cahoots with Thonar Silverblood, the patriarch of the wealthiest mining family in Markarth, and there is no doubt whatsoever that Thonar chose to have Eltris's father killed, dealing with the competition. All the more reason to side with Madanark in taking out that conniving Nord. And there you have it guys, the full story of the Forsworn Conspiracy. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, give it a like. Let us know down below in the comments who you sided with out of Madanark and Thonar. As always, thanks so much for watching guys. My name is Scott, and I look forward to nerding out with you again in the next video.